So today we're going to be working on reviewing for having, how, how to solve equations. And we're going to start simple. And uh, in this video, it's just going to be relatively simple, just a few steps. This very first example is a very basic equation when you start algebra. And this one is 3x plus 4 is equal to 10. So 3x plus 4 equals to 10. Now, what you have to remember is once you get this type of equation, or if you have worked on a larger equation and you get it to look like this, what you need to remember is once you're trying to clean everything up or you have it like this, you want to get this x alone. That's your goal. So I'm going to put a little circle around here to remind myself that I want that x alone. And let me do a little bit of a darker color. Let me go with orange here. Right. I want to get that x alone. So everything around it has to move to the other side. So it could say x equals whatever number it is. Okay. So when I do that, the first thing I have to do is what is added or subtracted to the x. And what I have added or subtracted is plus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite of adding 4. I'm going to subtract 4 to both sides. And we call that the subtraction property of equality. And when I do that, I get the following result. I get 4 take away 4 is 0. And then 3x, and bring down 3x plus 0 equals 10 take away 4. 10, 4 subtracted from 10 is 6. I always like to think of it as if I have $10 and I have to, and I owe $4, if I pay my debt, I have $6. That's kind of a trick I use in my classes. I think it works out pretty well because when you start to work with negatives and positives, it makes life a little easier and it's very tangible and easy to understand. So anyway, when I get to this point, anything plus zero with the addition identity is whatever you're adding to the zero. So 3x plus zero is 3x equal to six. And you can see how this is starting to go down. My next step is I just have one number next to x and it's attached to the x in multiplication, 3 times x. The opposite of multiplication is division. And again, just like the subtraction, what I do to one side, I must do the exact same operation using the same number to the other. And that gives me 3 divided by 3. That's the multiplication property. Uh, that's the multiplication property of equality. 3 divided by 3 is 1 times x equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. Now 1 times 6, the multiplication identity is x equal to 2. And there's our answer. Now, if you want to check that, you can go ahead and go to your original equation and put that into substitute for x2 and see if you should get 10. So let's try that. I'll do it in red here because we're checking it, right? So let me write check. Okay. And let me do this part in black. 3 times a number, the 2, plus 4 equals 10. Okay, so 3 times 2 plus 4 equals 10. The first thing we're going to do is multiply this. 3 times 2, 6 plus 4 equals 10. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. So you know that this is the answer. And this is called a two-step equation. First step, second step, and then you get your answer. And you can check it, and it is correct. Now, we're going to go to a slightly more complicated equation. Okay, now you'll notice there's a lot more things going on here, right? You still have that 3x plus 4, but we, we have other things. Instead of it being equal to 10, we have a whole bunch of stuff here. So, you, we're going to get it to look like the previous example, but we just have to clean it up a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing you have to do is imagine both sides. This is one side, this is the other. We're going to have to clean up this side and this side. Let's start with the easy stuff first, right? Are these like terms? Now, just to review, a like term means if it has um, a variable, you can add or subtract another term, right? A number or a number with a variable or a variable alone with um, a similar thing. So 3x plus 4. 4 does not have an x. These are not considered like term. This is just a number, and this is a number with a variable. 
So we can't add them together. We could multiply them, that's for another lesson, but adding them because they're not the same. Now, if this had an X here, it would be three X's plus four X's, which is seven X's, but it's not there. So we can't do anything. So we just rewrite it. This is as simple as that's gonna get. You can't do anything to it right now. Now, let's take a look and let's find the like terms. X's with X's, numbers with numbers, the same variable goes with the same variable. Let's start with the variables. Okay, so I have X, right? And these are three X's. Do I have another X? No, no. Oh yeah, I have four X. Do they have a power? No, so they match. X without a power, which is actually X to the one, and X without a power, these match. What's important is that the variable matches because you can add two numbers together but the variables have to match so these are called like terms i'm going to write one next to each other 3x plus 4x fair okay these are like terms i'm writing them next to each other now what what do we have after that we have actually let me write that in red so that we can see it 3x plus 4x now we are going to work with what's left, eight. That's a number. Do I have another number here in this side of the equation? Yes, I do. And it's positive eight minus 12, okay? So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna look at this piece. That's already in simplest form. All right, let's start with, I'm gonna rewrite this so we can keep working down. Notice it really helps if you keep the equal sign one below the other, it makes it look neater. I have three X's plus four X's. Well, both of these have X's in common. If I take these X's and pull them out, what am I left with? Three plus four, okay? And I do actually reverse distributive, or I can just say, hey, I have three X's and I have four X's. Well, what am I gonna have? I'm gonna have seven X's. What's three plus four? Seven X, okay? Let me write this over here. Three X plus four equals. Three X's plus four X's, you can write it like this, pull out X and just have the three and the four that you're adding, three plus four, because they have the X in common. You're taking that out. Or you can just say three X plus four X is seven X. Your choice, okay? Now I have eight minus 12. I call that, I have $8. I owe somebody $12. So if I use all my money, $8, because I'm gonna have to, what am I gonna have at the end when I pay, try to pay out my debt? I still owe $4 and I call that negative four minus four, okay? Now this is starting to look like the first example. We have a variable on both sides. Okay, we didn't have that before. We are going to have to move one of the variables to either be on this side or another variable to be on this side. And our goal is the variables together on either side, doesn't matter which one we pick, and the number opposite the equal sign. So I usually, when I have to move my variable, I highly recommend that what we do is we move the smaller one. You don't have to, you can still get the correct answer if you do it the other way, but the problem is you usually end up with more negatives. So my smaller coefficient between three and seven is three. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract three X cause that's the term. And I'm gonna find the match cause what I do to, when I'm adding or subtracting, I can only do it once to this side and once to the other. Now I can't do it to negative four cause it's not a like term. So I'm gonna put minus three X, okay? Three X minus three X is zero plus four equals seven X minus three X, four X minus four. Now, can I clean this up a little bit? Zero plus four, four, four X minus four. Not so bad, right? Look pretty scary up here. Now you've, you've got two more steps and we're done. We wanna get the X alone. Here is my X. I wanna get that alone. I have to see what is plus or minus to the X. It's minus four. I'm gonna add four to the opposite to both sides, one here and one here. Four, negative four plus four is zero, plus four X equals eight. 
Now, what is 4x plus 0? 4x. 8. I still want to get that x alone. What's next to the x? The 4. How do I break it apart? It's 4 times x. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And x is equal to 2. There's my answer. How can I check this? Well, I can put this right into here. Let's see if we have some space here. Let me see if I can make a little bit of space. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to be as neat as possible. Let's check. Okay. I'm going to try and do this in red. So 3x plus 4 equals 3x plus 8 minus 12 plus 4x. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put 2. 3 times 2 plus 4 equals, where every x I put a 2. 3 times 2 plus 8 minus 12 plus 4 times 2. Okay, what's 3 times 2? We're going to multiply first. 6 plus 4 getting easier 6 plus 8 minus 12 4 times 2 8 we have to multiply things for before you start adding or subtracting okay now we have adding and subtracting right well let's add them up and subtract from left to right 6 plus 4 10 equals what's 6 plus 8 mm, 14 minus 12 plus 8 we're almost done 10, 14, take away 12. I have $14. I owe somebody 12. If I use my $14, I still have 2. 2 plus 8. Is that a true statement? And hopefully you're saying with me, yes, it is. 10 is equal to 2 plus 8. My answer for this example 2 is x is equal to 2. That is correct. And that's how you basically do the basic thing which you're going to use when you have larger problems for solving for x or a variable and a multi-step. In this case, it's with one variable on each side, which sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. But at least you have an example now and you can practice on your own um, so that you can solve these. Good luck.